Um, stop recording. Stop oh. recording first. Oh. So we're gonna uh, do we know a roll call first? Yeah. So I have to this is very long, <laughs> two months. Um, Chair Colcat. Yeah. Uh, Vice Chair uh, Mike Fletchy. Martha. Martha. Are you here? Uh, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Claris. Here. Ray. Is that right? Right. 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 Oh, gosh, I always get Commissioner uh, Colback. Here. Commissioner Richmond. Here. Commissioner Old Wimple. Here. All right. I have a corn. So, um, <laughs> Chair, you want to lead the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, absolutely. Let's okay. stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right now we are open for the public comments for items not on the agenda. I don't see uh, anybody. Uh, so I don't see anybody uh, on the on the Zoom. We have nobody here. Um, we close the public comments. So we are on the next first items will be the draft minutes approve the minutes for the meeting held on march 20th 2023 you know why we missed our april meeting right i know that's why i was a little raw here <laughs> yeah. all right um uh, we approve the minutes uh we'll call. Just, let's just give it a brief minute if you don't want to read through okay, okay sure. yeah Please have a motion to approve. Thank you. We have a motion to approve. Um, Chair Falcat? Yes. Commissioner Claris? Yes. Commissioner Fry? Frick? Fry. Sorry. Commissioner Colbat? Here. Yes. Commissioner Richmond? Yes. Commissioner Ripple? Yes. Call for Martha's vote. I don't think Martha is on. Yeah, she is. Yes. Martha, Martha, are you on? Martha, we cannot hear you. You're muted. I think that is the uh, the PFM consultant, Monique, for doing the investment report. Just spoke. Oh, oh you think I'm, I'm on? I I'm sorry. I kept. I think you are saying Martha. Yeah. And my name is Monique. Oh, you're right. So it's not yes. Martha. Sorry, yes, Monique. My name you is... thought you might be Martha. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. My name is Monique. It's Monique. So I still um, sound like Monique. All right. And I am not allowed to share my video either. Oh. So. So the next item is um, Monique from PFM gonna do a quarterly investment portfolio report for the quarter ended March 31st, 2023. Uh, no, All right, good after, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm unable to share my video, uh, but I will be sharing my screen um, if that is all right with the body and I will uh, walk through the quarterly investment report. Oh, and I'm unable to share my screen as well oh. because of the Zoom meeting controls. Uh, I just make you the co-host. <laughs> so, okay. Are you doing now? Um, You're the co-host right now. Yes, thank you. And I'm going to uh, share my camera as well.
All right, you all should be able to see the presentation. Yes, there we go. Yeah. Correct, great. And you should be able to see me as well. Yes. yes. Yeah. All right, perfect. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for um, working with me. We're gonna go into full screen mode. I wonder if this is the wrong quarter. Yeah, it should be. Uh... Oh. All right, give me a moment. Apologies for that. Let me pull up the other document. I'll pull it up directly from the meeting packet. Technical difficulties. Let me know when you all are able to see the screen share. We can only see you. Okay. All right, it should be sharing in just a moment. Okay, can you all see this? There we go. There we go. Yeah. All right, take three. Uh, thank you for bearing with me. Um, I will go through the quarterly investment report for the quarter ending uh, March 31st. And I'll go through a market update and talk about the major economic stories during the quarter and then go through uh, the portfolio review for the city specific portfolio. Um, the market has been characterized, particularly in the first calendar quarter, by a few things. Uh, one, lingering inflation that remained uh, well above the Fed's long-term inflation target. And so there was a lot of focus on um, economic indicators as they related to inflation, and there was a lot of volatility associated with any um, economic release that spoke to inflation being higher or lower than the target. Um, another thing that we saw during the first calendar quarter was the labor market showing its first signs of moderation um, and a lot of economic uncertainty following the surprise failures of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. I'll talk a little bit about um, the steps we took during that terminal in the market, but I do want to uh, preface those comments with uh, just a statement that the city had no exposure to either of these banks in its portfolio. Um, or uh, First Republic Bank. Um, the Fed tightening uh, policy cycle by the end of the quarter uh, was essentially almost complete. We know since um, quarter end, the Fed has raised its benchmark um, interest rates to its current range of five to five and a quarter. Um, but during the quarter, there was a lot of uncertainty about the Fed uh, following through on that policy because of the bank failures. Um, but the Fed really tried its best to communicate to the market that it was firm on its policy decisions um, and that they would continue to stay the course so long as inflation um, was high. Um, during the quarter, we saw unprecedented uh, volatility. Um, there was a classic flight to uh, safety. Treasury yields fell very sharply as prices rose. Um, we saw the two-year Treasury yield fall from uh, 5.07 um, to just under 4% near quarter end. Um, we also experienced um, extreme yield curve inversion, where the three-month or short-term yields were much higher than yields available in the longer end of the market. In fact, the inversion was the deepest it's been in nearly 40 years. Um, what's interesting about that is you may observe some of your overnight um, investment products providing a yield in excess of your longer term bonds in the current market. And we expect that to persist so long as um, interest rates are high and the Fed is in this current stance. 
Um, another thing was credit spreads did widen, meaning that the amount of additional income that we received for purchasing a credit instrument like a corporate note um, or commercial paper or any type of credit instrument uh, provided much higher yields um, versus treasuries than they had in the past. Um, a lot of that had to do with the um, instability related to the banking um, issues, uh, but those levels were not as wide as they had been during the global financial crisis. And the reason for that is be, even though we saw yields um, or we saw those banks fail, it was really specific to those particular banks. It was not an issue that was widespread across the sector, um, like what happened during the uh, global financial crisis of 07 and 08. Um, diving a little deeper, um, I have a couple of visuals to really show how much volatility existed in the markets. Um, this chart shows um, just the changes in the two-year Treasury yield from January through April, and it highlights how much the yield on that benchmark bond rose or fell on any given day based on the economic news that was released. Um, so earlier I shared with you that, you know, any bit of information um, that could influence inflation or the Fed's view of inflation really move the markets. Um, you see at the beginning of the quarter on January 6 here, um, we saw our first hint of the job market cooling, and that was weak, uh, weaker wage growth. Um, the reason that uh, was an economic indicator is that um, the Fed is actually looking to influence the jobs market through some of this policy, uh, conceivably as interest rates rise and borrowing costs become more expensive, um, then employers will seek to um, hire less people, save money in other ways. Um, weak wage growth was a hint that um, workers had to take lower wages, perhaps the job market itself was contracting. And so the two year lost 21 basis points. Um, as you go through the quarter, you can see again, um, as the news shifted um, by February 3rd, we actually got a strong jobs report. So interest rates increased. Um, and that was the market's uh, perception that the Fed would continue to hike interest rates um, as they had stated. Um, in March is when we saw the biggest declines in yields uh, day by day, and that was, you know, strictly due to the banking issues. You know, Silicon Valley Bank was closed by regulators on March 10th. Um, we saw a signature bank follow soon there thereafter. And why you see interest rates falling was because the market had a perception that uh, the Fed would slow down their hype of pacing uh, to protect or insulate the banking industry. Um, instead, the Fed reconfirmed or reaffirmed uh, their desire to continue on their path. Uh, they were very clear in their communication that they felt that the banking issues were isolated to those banks. Um, and they committed to continuing on the path. And by the end of the quarter, they did increase their benchmark uh, rate by another 25 basis points. Um, they did another rate increase uh, earlier this month, and that's where we are with our current uh, interest rate range for the Fed Fund's target rate of five to five and a quarter. Um, another, oh, sure. Are you guys staying away from regional banks? because of all of this. Yes, we are staying away from uh, regional banks. Um, and, you know, I just want to be clear, we didn't have many regional banks on our approved issuer list to begin with. Um, but we tend to focus on uh, the globally important systemic banks, um, the larger banks uh, for our client portfolios, just because they're uh, more prolific issuers, they have more diversified balance sheets, um, we're, we're more comfortable um, with them from a liquidity standpoint, et cetera, uh, than we are with some of the smaller regional banks. So we didn't have a lot um, on our approved list. And during the month of March, we actually put all banks on hold for a while just to, um, you know, again, reaffirm our um, credit analysis on those banks, confirm that we're comfortable with them. So we put them on a brief hold, all banks. Um, we lifted that hold on the globally important systemic banks and then other financial institutions um, earlier this quarter, current quarter.
Any other questions or did that answer your question? Okay, um, so another um, indication of bond market volatility here on this graphic um, on page 17 um, of your packet. I just wanted to show the daily highs and lows of the two-year treasury yield on the right in this graphic. And I think what we really wanna convey is how much the two-year treasury yield moved intraday. So the sort of the length of the line indicates day-to-day -day movement. And during uh, the month of March, we saw an average daily yield change of over 20 basis points. So that's really significant on the two-year. Um, by the end of the quarter, the two-year Treasury yield was down to 4.03%. Um, the right side um, of this graphic is a measure of volatility in the bond market as a whole. And what you can see here is that bond market yields and prices move significantly, um, and they actually eclipse the level that we've seen during the early days of the COVID pandemic. So that just gives you a sense of how much the financial um, banking issues uh, really impacted investor perception. Any questions there before I move to um, uh, the Fed funds? Okay, great. Um, so on this chart, um, really wanted to highlight the difference in the market perception and what the Fed was communicated. Um, there are a couple of lines on this chart, so I'm going to go through it. Um, the blue area, the light blue area, is the one-year range in interest rates. So I would think of that being between March 31st, 2022 and March 31st, 2023. And this just gives you a sense of how much interest rates have moved over the past 12 months. Um, the solid blue line is the implied Fed funds uh, rate as of the end of March. And you'll note that this graph goes through March 2023 through March 2025. So this line gives you a sense of where market participants anticipate overnight interest rates to be over the next few years. The dotted line at the top is what market participants expected it to be at the end of February. And the reason we compare February 2028 to March 31st is because within the month of March, that's when all of the banking turmoil was happening. And so it just gives you a sense of how much the market as a whole, investors as a whole, change their perception of what the Fed was going to do just based on what happened during the month of March during those uh, bank failures. Um, the blue diamonds, on the other hand, are the FOMC projections. So these are what the Fed has communicated they are going to do. And the reason this is important is because the Fed is very clearly saying, because their projections have not moved, that they were going to stay the course. And that is why we had a very comfortable uh, point of view that the Fed was not going to change uh, what they were doing despite the banking issues during the month of March. Um, said another way, this is the Fed's uh, dot plot, and I'm, I'm very confident that you all have seen this chart before. Uh, this is a favorite exhibit of ours at PFM Asset Management. Um, this is a very similar data to the diamonds that you saw on the pri uh, prior page, but this just gives you a sense of how that uh, Fed funds target rate is expected to slow step its way down over the next few years. Um, so we expect the Fed funds target rate to remain in the range five to five and a quarter through calendar year end. Um, the Fed has been uh, fairly certain of that and for them to start lowering yields faster than anticipated, I think we'd have to see some um, fairly significant changes in inflation and the employment data. Um, but they show a, a slow step down through 2024 and then eventually through 2025. Um, now, what that means for the city's portfolio is that shorter term investments are going to continue to provide a higher yield. However, because we are expecting rates to decline over the next few years, we're continuing our 
practice of buying longer term bonds for the city's portfolio. Um, we want to be able to lock in uh, some of these higher interest rates today before yields start falling um, back to uh, their long term targets. How long a term of bonds are you currently buying? Um, we're buying, I'd, I'd say the average um, maturity uh, range for the bonds that we're buying is, is likely two and a half years. So, so nothing uh, too long, but, but right in that sweet spot, which is why I talk about the two-year treasury a lot, because it's a great proxy for, um, you know, the average baseline rate that we're purchasing for the city's portfolio. Um, moving on, I won't spend too much time um, on this chart. There's four exhibits on this uh, slide. There's change in real GDP, there's unemployment rate, there's the federal funds rate, and then there's the Fed's inflation indicator, which is a PCE or personal consumption expenditure. Um, what's really important about this chart is um, the fact that the projections from March are very much in line with the projections from December. These are the Fed's projections of each of these economic indicators. So quarter to quarter, the Fed's viewpoint um, hasn't really changed over much. Uh, the only changes that you see is that they've actually projected slower growth um, for the economy for the end of this year and for 2024. Uh, but they're still projecting positive growth all around. So nothing in the Fed's projections indicate a recession. Um, which shows that you know, they expect us to have a fairly soft landing uh, through their interest rate policy. Although they do expect inflation um, and un they expect unemployment to go up to 4.5% um, from its current um, uh, pace and they expect inflation to come down. Um, the yield curve is shown here. So again, that one year range is shown in the light blue. So think of the past 12 months there. And quarter over quarter, um, the changes have been that interest rates on the short end of the curve are a bit higher because the Fed again is raising those interest rates and yields on the longer end of the curve have declined. Um, what this means from per for performance, um, I believe I show on uh, the next few slides, I will back up a little bit. Um, performance overall was positive uh, for the quarter because interest rates fell. So again, you're in a one to three year strategy. So again, the average of about two years, what we're purchasing for you. But total returns, including income and market value changes um, were positive. And so your income and your return for the quarter was positive as well. Um, I do wanna talk about sector spreads just a little bit. Um, and I'll start by talking about uh, corporate yield spreads. So corporate yield spreads were a bit higher this quarter, again, just as a result of the volatility. Um, as Because corporate spreads are the difference between treasury bond yields and the corporate bond yields, uh, you can see they start at sort of 20 basis points or 80 basis points on the chart here throughout the quarter. Um, financials ticked up a lot um, because of uh, the banking issues that we saw this quarter. Um, industrial stayed uh, pretty much um, in their lane, although it had a, had a bit of an uptick. As I said before, we sort of paused on financial purchases for a period of time during the first quarter um, as a result of the banking issues. Um, on the right, the exhibit uh, we want to share here is to point out that even though financial yield spreads got wider, they certainly were not as wide as they have been during uh, previous uh, peaks. And you can see in 2007, 2008, where you were getting almost an additional 4% uh, for purchasing financial debt. Um, Zooming out a little bit to talk about spreads other than corporate spreads, we have a federal agency um, yield spreads, uh, which were a bit volatile, didn't move that much. Um, corporate notes we talked about, asset-backed securities and mortgage-backed securities. So everybody saw um, some yield spread widening during the quarter. But again, that's, that's mainly a function of what was going on um, in the financial sector. Um, 
The next two pages um, are in your packet on page 25 and 26, and they just share some of our views on the sectors and our outlooks uh, for the quarter. Um, any other questions about the market before I turn specifically to the portfolio? Yes, uh, Monique. Uh, I guess the elephant that wasn't in the room when all of this data was repaired or prepared in potentially April and uh, May uh, is this looming uh, default that's uh, no, the, 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 yeah. with the debt limit uh, with all the children playing in Washington, D.C. Uh, if they yeah. fail to raise the debt limit, uh, the, the markets are going to do crazy things. Uh, and I'm guessing that interest rates will skyrocket in treasuries. Do we That's want correct. Investing at all, just putting things in overnight for the next couple of weeks to see what's going to happen? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, our strategy for dealing with the, I don't even know what to call it, the lack of plan um, for the debt ceiling is to avoid um, treasury bonds that are near the sort of strike date, the date when uh, bonds start to default. There are sort of three scenarios that um, I think we're contemplating. One, uh, they actually raise the debt ceiling. They come to a, a last minute decision to raise the debt ceiling, in which point uh, we have no exposure um, to that date and, and everything fine. That's item number one. And the meanwhile, you have a lot of volatility in, your, in the value of your portfolio holdings. Um, scenario number two is that uh, they do um, miss the debt ceiling deadline and they do have a, a technical default and it's a short-term default, um, in which case we would not have uh, purchased any of the bonds that were up for maturity around that date you know, consumably those bonds do not get paid on that date or get paid a little later. But that scenario assumes that uh, that uh, technical default is short lived. You have a brief period of, of default. Uh, the third scenario is that you have a protracted uh, situation where they do not raise the debt ceiling. Uh, they default on those bonds that mature near that sort of strike date. And then they, they sort of keep going. And so you have a waterfall of default. Um, obviously, nobody wants scenarios two or three, but our plan is to avoid uh, having debt outstanding or purchasing debt within those maturity ranges for that sort of a very short strike date. And if the government has sort of a protracted um, debacle, uh, what have you, around the debt, uh, then we all have, have bigger problems. Um, in the world. And so the, the long term implications of that is the value of your treasury holdings decline significantly. Um, the interest rate on treasury debt goes up very, very high. Um, investors no longer view uh, the treasury as the risk free asset. And so that has lots of implications for liquidity. Um, of those securities in the market. Okay, well, it seems like we're, we're not suggesting we do something, but well, no, I mean, it's, it's interesting to hear what the uh, options. Are. And these are these are people advising me, so I guess I'd be knowing whether not buying treasuries for the next two weeks would be smart or stupid. Yeah, I, I think our plan is to avoid buying short treasuries um, to the extent they can near that strike date. Does your, your firm have any feeling as to if there is a short term default, what would happen to the bond that matures during that period? Would it be what would happen? Um, it would be a technical default. I think there's an assumption that the Treasury would ultimately pay repay that debt. That face. Yeah. I assume that face, but no additional interest. Yeah. Right. The assumption is, is is those funds would be ultimately recoverable. 
at face. I can't, it's hard to, it's not an I can't, it's hard to envision a scenario where the United States Treasury gives people less than a dollar on their debt. They, they don't, but the, but the issue is to finance that, to be able to pay that off, they're gonna have to borrow treasuries at five or six or seven percent in order to finance. Yes, if, if, there, if there is a default of this type, I think the borrowing rates on treasury debt go up, period. So if you've just- you know, we're, we're already seeing from, um, yeah, we're seeing from, um, you know, rating agencies, S&P, if you recall, is the, is the rating agency that already downgraded uh, U.S. Treasury debt to AA plus, plus from AAA. Moody's and Fitch had not done that. And, you know, Moody's recently put out, um, you know, their thoughts on the matter and, you know, spoke about uh, downgrading U.S. Treasury debt uh, for a time, um, I think they termed it a recoverable default. Um, don't call me on that, I'm not 100% confident about that term. Um, but there's there are gonna be large implications, huge implications from a default of this type. It hasn't happened before in this manner. So I think we're all sort of speculating a bit about what it looks like, but it's hard to envision a scenario where you don't ultimately recover those funds at base. What is the date that they technically go into default? If there's no that I don't. Uh, let me stop sharing for a moment. Is it August and September? It's okay. So yeah, I want to say it's on, September. Uh, so you're, not, you're not suggesting. You're not recommending we 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 do anything, and not even to our suggestion of we stop any further purchases of treasuries for the, until this is resolved, not that we, we don't buy those things every day anyways. Yeah, we're not buying treasuries every day, but we are, we are halting the purchase of longer, of, of treasuries near that strike date. And I'm, I'm trying to pull up a note on, on what that strike date is. I don't have it off the top of my head. Does your firm feel that the 30 year or the 10 year will be dramatically affected by a default? Yeah, I think all treasury debt is going to have, is going to require a, a higher yield. And so as long as you hold them to maturity. Oh, you'll get the you face get value, money, but that's money, but you ever need to yeah. pull it, yeah. you're going to be selling at a significant yeah, because price. Yeah, you're going to be selling it at a discount. Folks are going to demand higher yields for treasury debt. Until the treasury goes and pays that off at uh, base. Yeah. Okay. I do have a question. Um, so we just had the, uh, you know, uh, this new bank of investment policy to put this uh, in the first camp, group camp. Um, I believe the camp is all short term, right? The so it's one-time investment, very quick yeah. turnaround, right? Mm -hmm. So there's something uh, fixed in there because we were going to fund the camp accounts, but right now, because of this, should we just hold on to it or what's your recommendation? That's one. No, that's, that's a good question. So the camp account is a shared pool and, and the rating camp is very attractive. Um, whether you invest in CAMP or LAIF, all of those investment pools have exposure to treasuries, all of them. And, and that X date, by the way, was a few weeks, uh, days or weeks after June 1st. Okay. So we're, we're coming up on it. No, no, not yet. We were going to. Okay. Yeah. I think we moved in slow enough that if we wait a couple of weeks, I think, uh, we're coming up on it uh, fairly quickly and I'm going to start sharing again. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to start sharing um, again. I'm going to go briefly through the portfolio. 
full screen mode. Um, okay, just briefly through the portfolio holdings. Uh, the portfolio is in compliance with the city's investment policy um, and any appropriate guidelines furnished to PFM asset management. Um, your sector allocation here, this gives you a sense of where you have capacity based on the city's investment policy. So we have plenty of room um, in sectors outside of treasuries. Um, you know, we can move assets into federal agencies, supras, negotiable CDs and, and other classes. Um, the yield at market on the portfolio uh, was 429. That's representative of what the opportunity is for yield at the end of the quarter. And the city is earning on its portfolio a 2.33% because you've purchased investments over the past few years when interest rates were lower. Um, but the good news is, is you've been um, purchasing much higher yielding securities in recent uh, months because of how much yields have risen. Um, so a couple of things I want to point out um, on the portfolio snapshot page. Uh, the portfolio itself is about $48.9 uh, million. Um, we have been um, doing a couple of things with the portfolio strategy um, in the rising rate environment, one of which was keeping the portfolio duration slightly short of the benchmark. So if you look at this duration distribution on the bottom right, you can see we had about 17% of the city's portfolio in zero one investments versus the benchmark, which only has 7%. Um, that was intentional on our part. Uh, we were keeping the portfolio a little bit shorter so that when interest rates uh, rose, we'd be able to take advantage of that. Uh, now that the Fed has reached the terminal point, of their uh, rate height cycle, uh, we expect to bring your duration more in line with your benchmark. Um, so that is the activity uh, we're embarking on this current quarter. Um, the portfolio uh, remains of high credit quality and you can see your uh, portfolio um, diversification to the right. So about 47% of the portfolio is in treasuries, which is consistent with a lot of government portfolios. Uh, we are, as, as we talked about a moment ago, continuing to watch uh, the debt ceiling um, debate and are hopeful um, that uh, we don't uh, actually uh, default on our debt. But as I said, our, our strategies are to avoid investments around that uh, strike date, which is June 1st and um, are hopeful that if we don't have any resolution that the um, debacle will be short-lived. And if it's longer lived, I think there's a, a bigger problem that we're collectively um, across the globe uh, going to be grappling uh, uh, with. Um, investor um, sector allocation over time is shown on the chart here. Um, not too many changes in terms of our investor uh, preferences, in terms of sectors uh, that we like for the portfolio. Our goal has been and continues to be to keep the portfolio uh, diversified, um, to hedge against risk um, in any one particular sector. Um, and we've been able to do that fairly effectively. Um, the portfolio activity is shown here. On a net basis, uh, we did buy more treasury securities than any other sector. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what this chart looks like at the end of the current quarter. Um, but I'll, I will keep you um, apprised. I'm sure when we meet next, we'll talk about that. Um, you know, treasuries were, um, you know, the most lucrative uh, last quarter. As I mentioned, we were uh, holding back on some corporate purchases because of the banking turmoil. So did uh, hold on corporate purchases, particularly in the financial sector for a while there towards the end of the quarter. Um, return uh, was in line uh, with the benchmark just about this quarter. We did have uh, positive total returns. Uh, we're slightly under benchmark performance because we were a little bit shorter uh, than the benchmark. Uh, we also had some diversification in the portfolio, which dragged a bit. Uh, treasuries were great performers this quarter, uh, but we're pretty happy with this, this performance over the quarter and uh, particularly over the long run. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then my last formal slide is uh, showing the accrual earnings in the portfolio, which take out the uh, market value fluctuation. 
and you can see positive um, uh, returns for the city uh, over the period. Um, and with that, I will stop sharing um, and I'm happy to uh, take more questions from the group. Okay, we're good. Thank you. Very nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Monique. Yep. You're welcome. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. I do. It's going to get exciting. So we, do we have to accept this report uh, for the? Uh, yeah, I was going to add. Do I have a motion to uh, present this uh, item to the city council? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Second. Second. All right. We'll call it the end. Get this part right. Um, Uh, Chair Colcat? Yes. Commissioner Aquiris? Yes. Commissioner O'Brien? Right? Right? All right, but he's not here. Yeah. He's still not here. Okay. But you pronounced it correct. Yeah. Commissioner uh, uh, Colcat? Callback? Yes. Commissioner Richmond? Yes. Commissioner Weeple? Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right, so motion passed. So the next item is I um, for discuss the uh, financial policy. I did we stick on the prior topic for a sec because oh. uh, Bill Jean alluded to it and I wasn't sure what the answer is. Well, where are we at on thinking about late and moving into that? And in your work, have we determined there's any reason not to do it? Because again, I pulled those rates this morning. The, 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 the delta is over two points, apples to apples. So it's not obvious to me. If there is a reason that we're taking some risk, that would be good to know. But other than that, it just looked to me like late lets you get in and out of the 270 day portfolio that's dragging around old rates and can't let you buy in at current rates. And there looks to me, unless you found some friction to be a no. huge arbitrage, that no, we should exercise on the way up and then turn it exactly around on the way down the yield curve. And this, um, the delay actually was, uh, they sent me the paperwork, but and then that uh, Wale, the, the guy going yeah, yeah. to the presentation, he's on vacation, so his assistant actually sent me the answer all the questions for seven accounts. So I just emailed him back like today. So, uh, uh, we were going to, uh, because late we have $18 million right now, I was going to actually move $10 million to the camp, um, but I didn't concern about the short term because they just said tre U.S. Treasury. Uh, that's where a little kind of hesitant when the, the reports came out. That's what I was going to ask them. But, but we can, the, the, there's no question we can get out of late 100 cents on the dollar, move it to camp 100 cents on the dollar. And vice versa, right. So, right? We yeah. don't take, you know, um, yeah. So, so we don't have to absorb because economically, when we get out of late, we should get out at less than 100 cents on the dollar because their portfolio is not worth 100 cents on the dollar. And if we can get out without being marked to market, we should do so. Yeah. Absolutely. Right, just the process right now. Is there no any other things to delay? It's just the process, the paperwork. That's all it is. Yes. Yeah. So you think that was a, that was a, that was a, No, it should be like in, yeah, before June should happen. I already emailed them the, you know, this is a questionnaire when you open accounts and yeah. the home, yeah, all that. So I already sent that back today. I don't know, yesterday. Yeah. yeah. They're just waiting for the process. Yes. Your question. Okay. Does the council have any quest concerns about it when you, when you brought it up? I don't present the council yet. <laughs> I thought we did. Uh, so the investment policy, yes, we did. It was just the uh, opening a camp account at the, at the council? Yeah, it did. It did. They don't have any comments, anything. Uh, no. Yeah, because yeah, having done the math, on your 18 million, the difference today is 400,000 bucks a year. So I suspect we could find a way to spend it on other stuff. Sure, yes. Um, we, we're not going to move all 18 million. We're going to still, we're probably going to move to 10 million. That's me and city manager actually discussed. So, so that's a couple of employees. Yep. 
200,000. It's probably 200,000 on the floor. I bet you picked it up. Are we okay to move on to the next one? Agenda item for financial policy discussion? Okay. You'll make our week uh, May if you send us a note when you're done with camp. Oh, yes, I will. Yeah. Okay, financial policy. Um, this one, um, I really just, I revised it because we are going to present our budget to the GFOA um, for the budget presentation award. And based on their best practice, I redefined some of the terms and what need to be included. And the first point, it will, I uh, expounded the what fund balances, what's called the balance the budget, give a definition. So there is no, uh, you know, uh, confusion there. And the other one is, well, I always talk about reserve. So when I, I love which on there, um, when I will condition, we can use reserve yeah. and also how the uh, how we do the recovery plan for the reserves. So those things I, I added on. The last things I added on, it was the uh, just redefining uh, the capital assets, how we report it, just like the accounting term. We report at the historical cost, if it donated, and then we're gonna report at the market value of the day of donation. So those things I just redefined, uh, clarified the definition of uh, those terms. With that, so okay. I make the changes. Okay, so so let's parse this a little bit then. So definitions I can understand, okay, that, that you are changing definition, but there's some policy parts, you know, like what do we think is, uh, you know, uh, like you know, you you use just read an example. Up to one third of the contingent reserve balance may be used to finance capital acquisitions. That's a policy the yes. decision. It why is it a third and not a quarter or a half or whatever, right? So I just wanted to separate this uh, those into two. One is a is, let's just get past the definitional stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, not I don't know, I don't know if everybody's read this or does this need more work or or uh, how do you guys want to? Then well, I, I read it to have okay. a reaction. So okay, <laughs> it's only if you uh, want to hear. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But I just I just want to uh, separate the two because I think the Perfect. one is more just policy, and that I think we can all weigh in, and then the council will weigh in on them, and then the other is really just how we keep our folks. What's the process, right? So I'm uh, I give you much more leeway, June, to uh, fix the definitions because that's uh, basically following Gatsby definitions, etc. Uh, but I think uh, wherever it's a it's a it's a kind of a decision about how you know conservative or aggressive we want to be about debt management and things like that. That I think we should make a list of questions that we should sort of address and and uh, and uh, if, if there might be changes, then let's bring them to the council one thing at a time about the policy. You know, I think there are only four or five uh, in my mind. They're not uh, yeah. twenty. So I need we to can build this down to to. Just you know, then we can just have an agenda saying we're having a discussion about debt management policy or about capital reserve policy or something like that, right? So that way, I think we'll be more clear about what is it that we're trying to address as opposed to trying to do this whole thing in one. So you would like to dissect it in on uh, individual topics so that we can go in depth and, and truly understand that topic. Yeah, just but, because, but but not like you know, that could, my view is that I think there are probably four or five things that can move. You know, four or five dollars can move all of our finances, you know, and I think if we just take those, maybe we'll get, our, get to the bulk of it. I don't want to, you know, sure. sit there and uh, fix every comma, um, but uh, but definitely definitions you should do first yourself. All right. So uh, do you want to, like, uh, uh, go through one by one the red line items yeah. just discuss? So, um, so we can... There's some things that are not redlined also. So that's why I, I was bringing oh. this up is that, so this, it, it's been many years since we've actually, the commission has had a discussion about, about um, financial policy. I, I've i been on this thing for eight years. Or, I don't know how long. Oh my God, I'm turning out this year. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think I've only seen one discussion on this thing and that too was uh, very rudimentary. So it's been a while. You know, so I think this may be a couple of sessions before. Yeah, do you want to do a page flip through it? Yeah. Just at least put a fence around where people have a reaction. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Love to hear your comments, Jody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, just go through it. Okay. That's it. Well, we want to go through. Okay, them. we're going to let Tony comment first. 
No, because I, I I didn't I admit I focused on the red line stuff. Yeah, and I get to all right to the okay. special revenue classifications, and I think you want to talk about debt management before we get there. Because I, I just jumped to the red line. Okay, so put it up on the screen. Okay, so page one, uh, if you ever were looking at it, so there's no mention of investment policy as being a part of our financial policy, and that we've always kind of assumed and, and understood, oh, that's a separate policy. Uh, so the question is, you know, should an investment policy be subsumed by this so that it's all in one place, or does it make sense for it to be a separate policy and completely outside of this? Now? Well, investment policy and debt policy for OCD and workplace, they all separate away from the general financial policy. So they have to be separate adopted by the city council. Um, so that's just based on my experience, especially for debt policy that, that there are a lot more broad area uh, normally reviewed by uh, the outside consultant when you issue, how you, how, when you're gonna issue bonds, how you issue bonds, how you do the refinancing, yeah. those type of terms. So normally that is, it's not like a, here just the overview, but detailed will be, you know, I don't know how many pages, Really long page of that policy. Okay. I think the I think of those two, one of them's easy because the label I think doesn't match what it says. So okay. let me make a suggestion as you think about it, Jim. And this okay. overview, you have a bullet that's what number six. It says cash management. Yeah. My suggestion is you redo this. I would call this cash and investment management because when you go back to cash management, it talks about the investment policy, and it says the if that's going to be approved from time to time. Well, like you have like a like a seven page investment policy yeah. that's a separate document. Right. So are you suggesting that they should they should say the portion of the investment policy document as adopted by the city? I think so because it already yeah. kind of says that. Right. So I think it's yeah it's there and it's okay. it contemplates that that's part of it. I just think it's um you like to have clarity. I would just say cash and investment management and say the financial will review the city's investment policy annually and make recommendations. That seems like what we do with okay. investment policy. So then uh, same it, thing with, the, with the debt management, uh, all the debt management in this thing is pretty lightweight. Yeah. It does not talk about our ability to uh, issue bonds, et cetera, or anything. And we don't have actually a document that I'm aware of. The city does not have a document on What's our policy on uh, raising debt? Uh, I've never seen basic it. procedure of what to do. Is what yeah, it Wait, just says probably if says one says hire a hire a consultant. Like in which criteria, what triggers it? Yeah, no, what can we buy on bonds and what, what should we buy? How long we should yeah, find it? What type of consultant? Yeah. So should we make that a license? That also part of the where it says debt management. It's under cash management. The next bullet. Good point. Sorry. What would you want to say instead of debt management? Is that the right term for it? Just leave it as debt management? It seems pretty hard. Debt issuance? I mean, I'm talking about yeah. sure. Well, it depends on what you want to control. How much do you want to talk? Because debt management also implies how you pay it off. Right, issuance and management. Correct, management, what type of sinking fund you develop, all I, of that. that, 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 that think, issuance is just the physical issuance of the yeah, debt. I, I kind of think management. So it's fine. Yeah. That to me is I just wanted to put the word investment in there because I yeah. think we do mentally think of yeah. what yeah. PFM does versus exactly. You know, they have 45, 47, 48 million dollars, and we got another 18 million we run away from them right. for working capital purposes. Okay. So that seemed okay. Okay. Uh, so we change anything else to the top level? I think that was okay. Well, leave it leave it at debt management, but uh, cash and investment. So instead of separate bullet for investment, we just make it cash and investment management. Yeah. Revenue expenditure. John, does this need a bullet on systems? 
So well, if we're going to have a couple. <laughs> That's an interesting question. I mean, where do you want to put IT management? Should it be under a financial procedure? Well, as it relates to the financial systems, where's Mark? We need him. We have a point of view on how. I mean, a lot of corporations would say that, yes, that's a chapter in financial. Um, but we're not well, it definitely it definitely affects it if the IT system is not robust enough. We can't do financial systems. Our financial systems go down. The question is, what oh, would it for this question? Up to you guys. It's, it's fine. Too much? No, it's okay. You do it just as long as. Maybe we need a bullet there saying uh, uh, systems, financial systems. We oh, definitely need an IT procedure. Which yeah, under system. the theory of proliferating bullets, is probably not. No, I meant for each work. one of these, there should be a there should be a section, right? Yeah. So, but if if you were going to do that, yeah. and what you guys may want to think about, you have financial reporting, yeah. right? You could have oh, financial reporting safe. and related systems, or yeah. financial reporting. I I can live that. And information technology for above or something slides the natural reporting and and system and related systems and related systems. Supporting, supporting systems and supporting information technology systems yeah. in, in the this header on this page under overview could be shorter but the right. what you talk about in the yeah you want to mention below. somewhat in it right so this is the umbrella talk subject i mean no, your point's well taken because you you have critical information technology systems and if you don't have access to that you're pretty much dead in the water so we need to make sure that those systems have a certain amount of robustness but you're limiting it in the way that this is happening it's limiting that that it to the financial systems not to Dispatch and uh, and all the other systems yeah. that are running in the yeah. I, I like where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we don't want to go there. No, okay. That's why I like the financial reporting and and related systems. So that it's only talking about the financial systems. We're not. I don't think the financial policy like should cover uh, all of IT. That does not make sense. Well, like the well, maybe audit procedures for all of IT as well, well but at least this will cover audit procedures for the uh, financial system. Yeah, that was the, the last one I was going to bring up was audit, but uh, uh, I don't know. Again, I'm uh, taking Tony's uh, uh, advice about not exploding bullets and trying to figure out where audit would fit. Because that's it. That's a big hole that we brought up last time is that we need a outside of the financial commission or sub sub subset of other people to be on an audit committee for the city. And they only have to meet three times a year, which is fine, but <laughs> they should meet. Yeah, to actually go over the details of the audit. But just just an independent for transparency, just outside, you know, somebody mm -hmm. else also looks at the audit and has a conversation with the audit. So, the so you want to change the uh, the financial reporting to financial reporting and also include the related financial reporting and related systems and the annual review is where maybe we can put the audit annual review and audit process. The annual review of it just to mention the annual review of this. That's the, what I would be called CAFR now, right? Yes, no. Um, was just looking at, you know, the uh, the GFOA standard for the uh, financial policies, which they do have, like, include the financial planning policies, uh, revenue policies, expenditure policies. And then it did mention about, like, the inventory and access as well added on. But it's not like standard for uh, for that that policy. That's a separate document. Uh, mainly focus on the fund balance reserves, how to replenish the funds. Those are um, the the main thing that should include in the financial policy. As far as the audit, 
I'm not sure um, what's the, you know, we do have audit present to uh, the finance commission. We do have audit present to the city council. I'm not sure what's the policy about the audit. Well, I mean, I'm trying to press uh, a discussion for the council to say that, that one, we should have a policy that there needs to be an audit committee. Yes. Two, it must meet a few times. It has to then, three, it has to be independent of other people. Uh, so if, even if we just said that and got the council to approve that, I think that would force us to have an audit. Uh, in right. a, so what you should, it's not a commission, it's a committee of some sort that has to right. be, right? And, it, you know, I'm just trying to force the conversation. No, it's a good conversation. Ecology is going down the right path because the purpose of an audit committee is just to delve into the one issue of the audit. And so they go through the methodology. It's another set of eyes to look at the holistic system and make sure it's properly being audited. And I, I couldn't agree with you more. It's, it's more just for transparency, right? I mean, uh, it just, it's good to have uh, the audit being reviewed by somebody else. I'm not sure people who. Uh, but you may get it, be able to get into this bullet, right? Because when you go back to what this bullet leads yeah. you to, yeah. The second paragraph, you know, not surprising, it says an annual financial audit will be performed by an independent accounting firm familiar with. You can certainly add something. Yeah, that tail into that. that's all it says. Yeah, yeah. the audit will be presented to an independent yeah. audit committee, the financial that commission or committee in their own, but just appointed by the council or yeah. something. Yeah, or be, my guess is, and John doesn't have anything proliferating. Subcommittee, this committee. Yeah, the subcommittees. Mm -hmm. Yes, if, if, if I may. So, yeah. sorry to interrupt. So, that no, was no, no, a no. very productive conversation. I'm, I'm learning a lot from it. Um, commissions are being restructured, and one of the restructuring, I think, is going to limit commissions' abilities to form subcommittees. Yeah. And it's, it's not because of this commission, but there have been problems of Brown Act violations or near Brown Act violations when subcommittees have been formed. So, so I'm curious, I mean, is there an advantage to having a subcommittee as opposed to having the entire commission take a hard look at the audit and report to council? Well, I mean, okay. okay. First of all, I think that will make it not 12, but maybe 15 meetings for the commission. Uh, so that's one thing, you know, we're asking the commission then to meet a couple of times in a compact way, maybe three times, you know, in two months, uh, because uh, uh, additionally, uh, just to handle the audit. Um, and then uh, I think having someone who's maybe not even on the commission being on it is not a bad thing, just to have another set of eyes so that they just look at the audit, nothing else. Uh, Okay, I, I see where you're going on it. And, and if that's the recommendation you want to make to the council, I'm behind you 100%. I don't know if the city attorney's going to do with it when she gets it. Uh, speaking only for myself, I, I like the idea of competent people looking at the audit and giving input, especially if they're residents. I think the subset of residents that are really able to give intelligent insight into the audit is very narrow. And, and of course, it has to be the the, the citizens who are giving uh, their opinions have to be trusted by the council as a whole. Yeah. And that, that that also makes it challenging. I know that the commission as a whole is trusted by the council. And I think a subcommittee of the commission would be as well. So I I, I, I like where you're going. I certainly don't want to make it. So You've got too many chefs in the kitchen. Start with saying that the, that the financial commission has the responsibility to, to hold the audit, not just have a presentation like we do now like a you know a one week meeting before the the audit is not complete until we've done it and then so we need to just cycle this thing and present it properly i guess then i don't know i mean i mean i'm, I'm okay with that but uh but the whole commission here's the problem it is probably being the only former auditor and former cpa license holder <laughs> let it be told to do this no matter how you Instructed, so the rest of it's up to you guys. Because yeah. I seem never to avoid being the you go supervise the auditors, <laughs> yeah, oversee the auditors. Um, but and, and however, I mean, I don't think it's a dramatic increase of effort. But what I and maybe for John's benefit, I think the part that's lacking is normally 
the audit committee, the board committee, whoever it is, would normally have, with all due respect to everybody, people are understaffed, a meeting with the auditors on the front end of the audit and be, um, be involved in the auditor telling, here's the risk areas where we want to spend disproportionate time and settling that out so that when they come to you with their work and what in the in, in our what can weigh in in their world are called the quote unquote required communications. They've done nobody saying, well, did you look under this rock? We've already agreed on which rocks they're going to look under that are above and beyond generally accepted auditing standards. And you kind of have more of an end there. So I, I don't know that it's so that's what I meant by a couple meetings. more meetings, you know, but uh, and a subcommittee would be great. But if subcommittees are going to bend, go away, then the whole commissioner will have to take it on. But uh, it's fine. But I think we should specify that that that, that needs to be made a little clear. Yes, it's, it's not just a flyby through uh, through the commission. You know, right now we see the audit, you know, and it's uh, we haven't had the two preceding conversations that Tony just described, right? As to okay, this is. This is where our concern is spend some more time here. What are you looking at? What are you going to focus on? You know, we don't do that. Because it's hard, John, for the auditor too, when he or she shows up and takes questions from seven different people. Did you look at this? Did you look at that? And you get, and I feel sorry for them because they're trying to bang out their required communications, yeah. get signed off, get paid. And now, we already, we already paid there, there's a lot of arguments between. Sorry. I encourage you to make, make your recommendations to the council. I'm, I'm glad I was able to tease it out. I understand why you're going down the, the, this, way, this path for that our recommendation. Okay. All right. So those are sort of the areas that I thought, you know, uh, need to sort of just make sure and do investment. Uh, I would like a, 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 debt, a more conversation about debt, uh, you know, issuance, management, disbursement, raising, whatever, and uh, reporting and uh, systems, and then uh, annual review plus audit. So those are the four buckets where I thought, you know, uh, there are some policy decisions in terms of language. I mean, uh, I really, I don't think that, I mean, what is an operating budget and what's called revenue and what's not, and, uh, you know, is uh, too difficult to, yeah. it's more definitional. Yeah, and, uh, so, but we can go through all those pages. Oh, no, okay. I I was, sorry? No, if other people have comments, I actually... I agree with everything that's been said. I otherwise am on page eight three, so three okay. four pages back. But okay, um, so you have some red line. You want us to share? Just look at that quickly. On, um, on yeah, if I can go through it. that very quickly. Yeah. So the all the this and, and, and just what we're topically to the one thing you may want to consider under debt management that I think is okay. now forgotten, and I don't know that. Given the rates, we probably won't do anything with it because we look like geniuses on borrowing it. But <laughs> yeah, but the um, so I think we'll do nothing. But people have to remember the um, and help me, Kulji, the community center debt has a use it or lose it prepayment window. Yeah. I think once a year. Yeah, and so I would just and maybe it doesn't have to be in the policy. I would like to know that somebody in the building here has calendared. Yeah. When that is, somebody so makes it a permanent decision. You know, we're not going to use some cash to prepay it because right now, if if uh, one month treasuries are five something, we wouldn't use a nickel to prepay two and a half percent debt. Uh, but that day may come again. And 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 my recollection is how it works is, um, that I thought there was an annual opportunity to prepay, yeah. use it or lose it, and then you can't prepay again for the next year. year. That's not how would you put that on a calendar to make sure that you know somebody would do that? How is that how does that work? Well yeah. well I understand, but who who I mean we've had a lot of turnover in finance, no right. disrespect or anything, but how does the city survive any kind of turnover for a calendar that it was what things are on calendars of people who left such as this that we can rest assured are being taken care of my um actually we do have a finance calendar for all those type of events yeah. uh, unfortunately what tony says it's not on it so yeah. 
So this is like we we just heard this one. So I will go back actually. Look, we do have a finance calendar. Just yeah, that. I love that. I think that bank's changed name. It's called Standard Mortgage now. It's called something else now. So yeah. Like, yeah, but you 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 have a cap, right? That like they get their compliance certificates. Yeah. So there's yes, a bunch yeah. of stuff you do, and I'm we just saying there's one one that's one that's not one that's one that's one that's one that's Things, no, I understand, yeah, but that it's an interesting question is that if you do have somebody who has it on their personal calendar, uh, I mean, uh, corporations have corporate calendars that everybody can see. So if the person needs to, we have a Los Altos calendar. Yeah, we're that doing, we do have the finance calendar. Okay. Yeah. It's called that the access to yeah. lots of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah, and, and just raise it because if you hadn't lived through it, you could go a long time without knowing that provision exists because it was heavily negotiated. Okay. Now that 2.2 rate is gorgeous. You guys look like geniuses. It's always tempted. <laughs> okay, where do we go next? Uh, so the red line on operating budget was just a definition page. Yeah, yeah I just uh, defined what is called the balance of budget. Normally, by standard, GFO standard is a recurring expenditure to not exceed the recurring revenue. And the total expenditure should not exceed the total revenue plus available funds. So the, the second sentence actually it is uh, include uh, maybe one time one time expenditures. Uh, so that's but normally it funds the budget is called recurring expenditure do not exceed the recurring revenue. So those are kind of important. How at what condition I think you call it is a balance of budget. That that's what I define the definition in there. Extraordinary items, extraordinary items. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the that part. And okay. uh, I don't think we have a comment on that, so that's fine. You can go ahead and set that red line. Okay. CIP, next page. Okay, now this one. I don't have anything on the. So now on, on, on page 79. So, uh, capital improvement program. Uh, maybe there's a definition of what is capitalized and what's not that needs to be here. Oh. And, uh, so that it can be called capital and what is expense. I don't know. Uh, well, there's a difference between the capital improvement program than the normal capital access because capital access would define, you know, anything. It can be 5,000 or 10,000 depending on the nature. No, uh, but I, I, this one is... Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. So we Put that definition in here that you know just because you bought a seven thousand dollar computer it's not part of a capital improvement program right that's capital asset but it's not it's yeah. not a capital cip i think it defined the purpose of the cip it says it should reflect the current and the changing needs of the community as well as enhance the quality of community quality of life i think those are you know, they have a brief um, spelled out what it is in here. Um, but you, you want a more definition on the public explain the capital information? Just to exclude uh, that lesson. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. The, the first sentence makes reference specifically to the five year CIP plan. Is that yeah. is that not sufficient enough? I mean, when, when I read this, I understood it to mean. This is our policy with reference to those specific items in the plan. So and they either say, they're uh, either budgeted or they're not. So let's say, you know, we're going to buy a fleet of five cars for the police front. It's not CIP. You and I know that, but it's not explicit, right? It's $200,000, but uh, we're not calling it a CIP program. It should not show up on a CIP list. As a capital access, right? So, do, exactly. you have a, do you have a separate section someplace that's capital asset token acquisition? Yeah, on the map, very last. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think she's one of the more finer definitions. Um, okay. um, I just want to make sure that because that list to the runaway list, the CIP list has like 70 things on it, right? Yeah, there's everybody's favorite project on it, and some of those things are actually not capital CIP. So, you know, I, by, well, I by, think, when I look at that, but I think. Uh, 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 I understand where you came from. Um, I think the city also have a separate for the equipment replacement funds. It's called the equipment replacement plan. Yeah, I think that's separate of the five year CFP because they are there. Well, I understand it was separate, so that's uh, how I think. Uh, is that 
that's, that's, that's mainly for the equipment replacement. Well, see, that's an interesting question. What exactly does CFP? Because I, police cars are not included. So are we just talking building and roads and sewers? Yeah. The CFP, like this remodeling board, the yeah. you know the city council chamber. Also, we have a, a public art program to benefit the community. Uh, oh, we also road also, resurfacing is in CIP. I don't understand yeah, why. It, it is road oh. resurfacing. It is in CIP. That's like almost an uh, annual expense. We do that every year. It's not even uh, capitalized because it's it's finished by the end of the year. You know, we're resurfacing that damn road again every year. No, 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 it is. But you see, I mean, I can yes, see yes. things like that on. Yes, yeah. so, we call that annual street surfacing with yeah, all the money surfacing. Exactly, that's why. Maybe that's why. Well, that's the annual street surfacing. You know, a series of definitions is not bad. You're bringing up some really good points. All right, I can put some definitions to detail yeah. the capital improvement program. Yeah. Maybe it's you this. just need to say it's, it's this is an infrastructure only or whatever. I don't know. I might, I might change to how about change to capital improvement and the major maintenance program. So that will get it's to the roads, right? Annual street uh, resurfacing <laughs> that way. <laughs> but there's several things like this. That's what I'm saying. You know, yeah. like, I mean, I think somebody would bring up buying $200,000 worth of cars at CIP, but it's not, right? Yeah. So. So either we call this the infrastructure improvement program, IAP or program or or something. I think this is kind of regardless you capitalize or not. And then, for uh, example, if we buy uh, support like a public art program, it's not necessarily we capitalize. You know that whatever that program is. What I'm getting at, June, is that uh, that I think people uh, that start looking for budgets that they can go after, right? So it's money. I need five cars. Let's put it in the CIP. You know, right. that's fishy, right? So we want transparency and clarity that the council and the city and the, all the people know that when we say that all our money is assigned and allocated, it's allocated and assigned to the right things, right? We can't just be double counting or going after other budgets. Good point. So we are not double counting. I know we're not. Thank God. But he, uh, he's not suggesting anything nefarious. But he suggests it fair. can be right. People yes. can say, hey. You know, uh, uh, we have two million in CIP at the end of the year. We're going to put into it. That's five cars with it, right? That I have to prove by the city council. So I thought we took five year CIP program. Yeah. So it was preset that by the city council and reviewed by every year we're taking off. The city council can put anything, anything on the CIP and move it up and down as they like, right? And they do that. So they can put those cars on it if they wanted to, thinking it's CIP. And then nobody's going to question it. It's not CIP. Well, we do have a, a the, just for that particular case to put a cars or whatever all that we city have a clear direction we have to have an equipment replacement plan like vehicle like a fleet plan and then they will be rotating out that plan actually is been written uh already so those that's, are that's great but uh, but as far as we're talking about a financial policy we should have clarity about what goes in this bucket is what yes. all i'm saying okay. that's all so some sort of definitional, uh, maybe even if it's an inverse saying it is not, it is not this, it's not this. It's not your it's, it's not a capital <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, I don't know how to do it, but, uh, but I hope- Greater clarity on the definition. Okay. I think it's what he's asking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, revenue section, uh, I, I don't have any added text. So are we gonna uh, then uh, add some text and then maybe, and then review it next time and approve it. All these draft changes we're talking about. This one? So, yeah. The financial policy? Yeah. Um, we gonna actually this one, I'm gonna after you make the recommendation and then I will revise it. You want me to bring back to you and yeah. people present yes, to the city council? Yeah, there's no sort of timeline on it, but uh, I think it'd be good to just have one final decision. And like, you know, some of the red lines that we are putting now, just, you know, yeah. get rid of those and then have the new red lines. I can bring back on the next Monday because we're short on the cost of making okay. time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, revenue section, which to leave as is. Right. Comments on revenue, no yeah. expenditure expenditure section, and cash management section. I will add a cash and investment management. That's yeah. the bullet point. So, so it would be good to have a line saying 
uh, some reference to the investment policy, city's investment policy, or maybe just call it the city's investment policy document. Do these documents have numbers on them or they just have alphas? Like does this document have a document number on it and a revision attached to it? No, that's but not a bad not, idea to do is to have a certain wait, revision. But we do, every time we present to the city council, we do have a resolution numbers for each okay. policy. So you do have a, a, a control. Yeah, 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 yes, we do. Yeah. And you have a master document control list, right? Yeah, okay. city clerk office does that. Yes. That's city's investment policy. Yeah. Is that enough? That's what that, this, just changing the title is enough? I think so. Like yeah, it's here. Yeah. I think just the title, cash and investment method. Okay, now debt. Does that management um, the that is right now, right? That sustains financing payments at a manageable level. So I think in our recent past, the only debt, and I do mean the recent past as an outlet for 30 years, that's a, that's the recent past. <laughs> one right this is the only loan we have is for the building for the thing i thought there was some little yeah, piece yeah. rattling around in Rosia park yeah that's, that's, that's true small for a few hundred grand a hundred thousand dollars maybe at the most yeah we'll see the park yes yeah, so okay. we do have so um i think at that time we were kind of wondering you know does the city have the right to for, you know, for what's the criteria? And we made up a criteria, right? The criteria we made up was uh, in our conversations, and it took a while, is that uh, we figured out what was the debt service level the city could afford or should, uh, should apply, and then computed what the debt can be. We said, you know, Let's only raise debt that can be serviced for six hundred thousand dollars. I think is the number we came up with, and uh, that translated to twelve million, actually, and uh, whatever, uh, because uh, we really didn't know, you know, what's the implication of having that. And we said, okay, the implication is that that's opportunity cost of that those funds. And looking at our budget, uh, if we had done more debt, which we qualify for a hundred million debt, you know, I mean, we can get a lot of debt because, you know, the, our assets have a lot of value. You know, somebody could take over this, uh, the two acres around this thing and it's probably worth a lot of money. Yeah. So it's not that we could not get more debt. The question was, what should our policy be about how much debt the city should have? So we came up with saying, as long as we can service the debt without impacting essential services, without impacting, um, still having money left for some CIP, et cetera. And we came up, we computed it to be about 600, right? Yeah. Right. So, um, so we had to come up with something on the fly, frankly, because there was not enough language in our debt policy for the, for the city. And fortunately, the council accepted it and uh, we got a $10 million loan. That's less than 600, I think, in annual payment. Are you suggesting that we should have a formula? Not a formula, but I, I mean, there well, needs to be some guide rails, right? As to how do you, how does the next, uh, if we want to get a $50 million loan, a $100 million loan, you know, should we do that or not? Because we will qualify for it. That is something. Well, I, I understand, but if you're saying essential services, then you do come up with a formula that you say essential service revenues yeah. minus these right. services equals the maximum amount. Of it. that's, that's not a static. Yeah. And so how is this different though? No, I'm not saying a static number. I'm saying a static I number. Saying. The, the last sentence of the section, what would you say that's dramatically different than that? Or, or, so we all agree we're not going to finance current needs without modifying. Well, it's not like we're not going to finance current needs without modifying. Again, uh, the yeah. policy budget, it is a recurring revenue can, and the minus uh, uh, recurring uh, expenditure, which is if you have that payment, that's recurring payment. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. revenue had to cover, recurring revenue had to cover, not one-time revenue, like ARPA mm -hmm. money, that's one time, that's not count. It's recurring. So, to an extent, you do have a formula in so that's why this bond. Well, it's a guideline, but it's a, it's a guideline for it. You, you got to do this. The guideline says three things so far, right? The 
is in here. It says you're not going to fund current needs, right? Nobody takes a different side of it. Number two, you're not going to fund anything beyond the useful life of what you're funding. So you're not going to fund the balloon. So that seems okay and you know, way this side approved. Mm -hmm. And then the last part is you're going to know where the money is going to come from right. to pay it. This doesn't quite open the door of this is going to become a, which is what we did across the street, which is it's going to become a general fund need each year to do it. This you're not funding so general, general funds, funds through debt. No, but it, it goes the other way because we're funding that other building through general fund needs. But I'm not sure you need to say it. it says you're going to fund it either through project revenues, of which the, just by that analogy, because you the community center had de minimis project revenue, a little bit for recs and parks, yeah. but not much. And then otherwise specifically identified revenue sources. And I, if I was sitting here saying, I think we had that, which is we said we're going to make a create an intergenerational burden on the general fund. And as when needed, um, we will allocate some of park and loo to it because in doing it, everybody confirmed you could use park and loo to service that debt. Yeah. And I'm not sure how much more you'd say here and still make the same decision and feel like you're operating within this. Yeah, okay. So I mean, it's just a philosophical proposition, right? Yeah. I mean, so, uh, which is, okay, so do we, we, do we feel good about uh, leaving our children or if our children can ever afford to live in Los Angeles, uh, you know, uh, somebody uh, a, a debt for a building that they're going to use. I mean, you know, 30 years from now, that community center will be here. So why not let them pay for it, right? So in that context, you know, is how we sort of said, okay, you know, it kind of makes sense to uh, have that building have debt. But, the, uh, but we, that's a little bit open-ended, you know. Why not a theater? Why not a cinema? Why not this? You know, we could make a lot of things that will have a 50-year life, right? Uh, so where, what? So there needs to be something and some other things, by you know. So uh, we, sure. In the budget process, there's a one thing we had to calculate. It's called the debt limit. Normally, especially those tax revenue funded, like general fund funded the projects, if it cannot exceed the assessed value with the formula, if you're talking about assessed value and then times 25% and times 15%. So those are, our debt cannot exceed that amount. Yeah, well, what that, I'm saying is that that will be a very high number. Our assessed value of assets would be a very high number. Yeah, but that's why it only times 25, the quarter of it, and then you lose the 15% of that quarter, that is your debt limits. Or yeah. So, so but there's an argument, right? I'm saying, one, well, okay, let's leave the city, then let's leave our our, our children a uh, nice building that they're going to pay for, let them pay for it. You know, the other is to let's leave them a completely debt-free city. You know, so that if they have a downturn, they can actually handle it. You know, so there's a different approach to how people look at debt and look what the how conservative are, uh, you are in your finances and will apply their own personal perspective to it. Uh, for the longest time, this city was very averse to debt and felt that uh, we didn't want any long-term debt. Right? Well, that's what everybody thinks uh, we have enough like cash for reserve on hands. But however, for past, especially past few years of the pandemic, we kind of like the, those balance kind of went down. So now, um, again, uh, by refinancing which building or, you know, is a city council decision we presented that as the idea, of course, underwriting, just like a buying house, there is a lot of hoops you have to jump through to calculate if you can't actually afford it. Um, so they were not like us issue that if we can't afford, that's for sure. Again, uh, back to the balance, but we have to have, make sure we have enough recurring revenue to cover the debt to make this, so even if we can't cover it, so the debt is not going to be issued because that's not balanced the budget. Yeah, that that's, the way yeah, that's understandable. Uh, the debt for, for the, to our services. So let me make a suggestion because part of the way I manage like these meetings is I don't have dinner before I come. <laughs> <laughs> um, why don't you, Kulji, take on the straw man um, if you wanted to edit this yeah, uh, so that there's something that target practice on next time. Okay. I'm not feeling I mean, the need fair. to overly work that out, but if you have some other boss, and part of the problem is um, I don't sit up here, I don't make the policy. I'm completely comfortable with inter what we did intergenerationally because we saved money out of a bunch of people's high for years and years. 
gave it over and kicked yeah. some of it to the other end and effectively probably 30 years worth of people really did pay for that building between the excess savings and the debt. So I sleep like a baby. No, I'm with you. Year. I mean, I, I, I feel that that's the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are a lot of people in town who do not believe that that's All the right thing to do, right? I think so. All right. So you own the straw man. Okay. You want to touch this up. So yeah. we have target practice you know, okay. um, next time. Okay. So next red line, let's go through this quick, is about balance. I actually, the city does not have a permanent fund. That's why I believe that from the first section, um, that's the only thing I changed on the next section. And it's, uh, I didn't change anything for balance of classification. And next section I changed is special uh, revenue classification. Um, since last time we did the financial plus, apparently we have a more special revenues, uh, like measure B, BRF funds. Bank fees, public art funds, those funds that just been um, just added off after the last, uh, you know, financial policy adopted. That's why I just want to make it as whole. Yeah, that's so cute. I only have one question that there's one on here that I didn't understand, which is the fifth bullet is storm drain deposits. And I thought the whole point was we don't have a storm drain fund. We don't have a revenue source. People diddled with that. And people were up in arms that that ought to be part of the general fund. And I didn't think this exists. This one, I actually don't have a lot of history on this, but I think one point in time we do, uh, we try to pass the measure for the storm drain, but if I ever didn't pass. Because yeah, it went nowhere. There, there's going to be movement on that issue. All right. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right after you get the sewer so, price yeah. increases in, then come back to yeah. this one. So. Um, <laughs> come on up here. About that. That, that, I think the timing sets right on. All right. <laughs> Okay, gas B, fine. So next one will be the fault balance levels. Uh, only thing, um, in, but this is I added a section of the intended use for reserve. When, uh, when, what a situation we can use reserve? Those are kind of standard language, like interruptions in cash flows, for example, like the, uh, the state holding back the, the tax distribution or loss of sales, those type of events. Um, so we can touch reserve, but it's not exceed 40% of the beginning reserve balance. Those are the, regard how I got a 40%, those are recommended by the GFOA. So that's where I use it. I'm not really have a lot of research on those. I just yeah. pay, I believe that's the best practice. That's why they recommended. Uh, same thing for when we have emergencies, like earthquake disasters, um, that's the one the time we can touch the reserve. Uh, capital acquisitions, that's where they, of course, this had to go through city council approval anyway. Uh, if we really want to purchase, uh, you know, um, use contingency funds to uh, purchase capital. So, so sorry, go, ahead. Go, go first. Uh, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, of every edit you provided, Jim, not just personally, uh -huh. the ones I had a strong negative reaction to were adding capital acquisitions and emergent opportunities to accessing the reserve fund. So I, I just think that philosophically isn't how I've ever understood nor where I'm at. So philosophically, here's how I understood this was supposed to work, which is we had a target 20%. Gabe would tell you he wants a higher percent, but let's call it we're successful and finally, and I think he finally got to refill the 20%. So you, you guys spend 50, 55 million bucks a year. So let's call it $11 million is what this fund is. The way I've always thought of that is you got 63 million in cash. I know a lot of it's in other funds. This is the 11 million at the bottom that you're only gonna touch for a really good reason. And these two reasons strike me as financing decisions and liquidity decisions. They don't strike me as, holy smokes, we can't make payroll. And my personal view has always been this $11 million is, holy smokes, we can't make payroll and I understand it has to go to the city council one way or the other but philosophically and I'll stop talking it, this ought to be set up consistent in my mind with that philosophy the city council wants to amend the financial policy because yeah. we're going to build the theater we're going to flex this 10 million dollars rather than borrowing it or we're going to replace it that's a policy decision people up here can do it but that when I think of an operating reserve that's not what I think the operating reserve is ever used for but I'll stop talking. That's just how I look at it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. that's kind of like, oh my God, what, what did we just throw in there? I mean, uh, 
capital acquisition as a, for the use of reserves? That's well, I think uh, when I, there's, there's two sides. One is you said, you said that situation. Another thing it is, so what about we have a natural disaster type of like, you know, uh, city of paradise. There is no building, every building burned down. And at the point in time, you, you got to have a building to operate. And then that will be belong. I said, that's in that situation, there will be capital, you know, pressures because you need to have a city hall where you have at least some sort of the building to do the operation for the city. Yeah, all the I think the five people sitting up here, even if the building isn't here, so they're out in the parking lot, the folding chairs, that's a super simple discussion. So yeah. we got to crack the $11 million and do that because we got nowhere to sit. The, so the this doesn't say anything this like this. leaves a, a door open to all kinds of things. And, and, right. and, and, and again, it's ultimately right. a policy decision. And, and I don't mean to right. speak for <laughs> my colleagues up here. I, I think the fact that the reserve fund was ever touched at all, um, uh, we remain kind of not thinking that was really what should have been done. I think our view is and then you guys have policy made to do whatever you want. Our view is it's the last 11 of the 63 and you're gonna to touch it when it's really a bad day because that's what's allowing you to do other spending and build that building as you got that 11 there if something bad goes wrong, but it ought to be something really bad and unexpected goes wrong. Uh, we do actually the discussion have a uh, like a facility of uh, replacement reserve. Um, yeah. So those have, I mean, I can take this out. That's it's no problem. But uh, both of them. it is Emerging both of them. Yeah. Emerging are, opportunities and capital acquisition. Yeah, we were thinking about to have just in case you know something um, happened on the facilities. Yeah, so I don't say you got fifty million dollars first. Yeah, what you touch this? And, and you can create whatever reserves you want. You can, to, I'm just reacting to the twenty percent operating reserve. I think we just philosophically always viewed as. That's how a really that's bad, thing. dark day. And, right. and um, some of it got tapped, I think, for 999 Fremont, yeah. which I would never have tapped it for. We managed to get through the trough in COVID with the Fed kicking up the money. That was essentially what you probably otherwise would have had to use this for yeah. your feds. That would have been sad. So I'd say these two inserts, we're happy to consider other views, but at least for me, this was not at all how I looked at the offer. Well, even just for that 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%. Okay. All right. I'll take that out. Um, the next, uh, the emergency of opportunities, emergent opportunities, and that one is also same, same, same thing. thing. Same. Okay. I would take that out. Um, so other part of criteria for use, that will be it, it pretty much just dependent on the city council decision. Yeah, yeah, that's the, they get the last word, and so yeah. go to them. They want to tap the eleven million dollars. That's fine. That's but they cannot point. exceed the fifty percent of the required policy in a given year. That's the bottom line. We have to keep at least fifty percent. You got to ask those guys. That to me is how, yeah. you know, how big the earthquake was, or how severe the need is. I, I don't feel because I think it's going to be such a rare event where you're tapping this thing. I mean, I think it's their judgment what to tap, but. Like I said, you're hearing, at least I've always had this explained as philosophically, you really can't make payroll and have real problems of meeting your responsibilities. Um, I'm putting here because of, I think that's like already a normal what's going to happen, right? Is city, city council vote for use this for whatever the reason of this, that, that's what's the language in there. So, but again, it's a kind of a, a, a clarification more clarify what situation that could have touched. There's a lot of the situation, of course, city council voted and we can touch the reserve. But you don't want to invite them to use the money. No. Mm -hmm. okay. Our company accept. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, yeah, that big ceramic jar that says cookies. <laughs> that's that's what we get the hit on line anyway. So yeah. that's really fun. I, I think right. that's <laughs> good. Good. I don't want you lined up to use the line. on a little bit. I think you sure. Yeah, yes. You have the same idea, right? Yeah. What about the replacement plan for if we touch reserve being any, you know, what sure. we discuss situation? Um, I'm just saying within 60 days, we got to have a plan, right? Right. 60 days, we got to have a plan. And then um, it doesn't have enough money teeth in it. I mean, just says you got to have a plan. It doesn't say you have to, you have to replenish it in a certain way. It's fine. I don't think I'm not that concerned about it. Okay. Well, I think as a prior member, I mean, Gabe was pretty diligent about refilling the pump. 
um, it's, it just says replacement, replacement plan uh, cannot exceed five years. Normally, it should not exceed the five years on here. You can see the five years should be, you know, approved by the city council again. So that's five years. Okay. If it cannot be replenished in the next 12 months. And but left to my own devices, I delete the last sentence, to be honest. Yeah, okay. because I mean, it, it should be refilled as soon as practical. You guys, as a policy matter, decide what's as soon uh, feasible and practical to do so. And I think the rest of it's, I don't think we need to create yeah. those guard rings. Okay. Because it depends on the severity of the emergency, right? Yeah. Yeah. It does. Well, the right. emergency that's over in three days, you know, or sure. and are, is the state or are the feds going to come in and backfill or are we on our own? So I take the last sentence off. Keeping yeah. yourself by the yeah. end. Yeah. All right, the next right line I revised because before we have called the uh, OPAP resort, the reserve is called other post employment, but like uh, retiree health reserve. Yeah. Right now, um, it was John Capato when he was here. We actually combined the retirement and then the OPEC together. That's why the that sentence comes in. But combine two of them together. But of course, we do the uh, accurate report for uh, OPEC, also for the pension. Those are uh, produced by annual. Even the OPEC is every other year for the for the whole globe. But we do do have the small ones every year. So we combine the funds. It was the reserve, it wasn't a fund. And then when John was, was now it is. John, when John was here, we separated out into a reserve fund. Yeah. Before we just the reserve, uh, kind of like in the general fund balance, yeah. have a separate lines. You know, when this is 20%, this is the OPAP 5 million, all that. It was in the, well, if you look before the uh, financial statement, they are all combined with the general fund. But now we separate out and call reserve funds. Yeah. Again, the policy it is if it's, um, if we want to transfer, we want to transfer anything between the fund that had to prove by the city council before it was only in the general fund, so it doesn't have to prove by city council. That's another thing, but not a separate fund. Yeah, that's fine. So, so, so this is one, and I'll, I'll take this one. I actually think this deserves another sentence, which says, you know, at least annually, we'll evaluate. The funding status and make recommendations as to addressing funding status. Because uh, my, my guess is, and it's just wild ass guess, interest rates have gone up enough. The present value of benefits should come down a fair bit. I actually think our funding status will improve, but yeah. we should look at it once a year. I mean, I think this is, if, if somebody really looks under the covers, this is yeah. the biggest risk area. Even in the audit, we have so little control. Even in the audit, the range was such that if you hit the, the favorable bond, it was, had an impact of you know double digit millions to us. How much should we go? I mean, it, it, and I, I don't want to prescribe anything. It just seems to me if there's any funding status account that we should look at every year, it's this one. Mm -hmm. So it, I did have a sentence here the city maintained the internal funding. Uh, for the OPEP and the uh, unfunded liability, which is special uh, obligations based on the uh, based on the accurate report every year. So we do do that. We do fulfill our obligations. That's that's a sentence in there. Yeah. Set aside the funding. Yeah, I mean, I was, I'm happy to send this in. All, all I want to say is, I think we're not collectively doing our job unless we evaluate that whole each year. Are you also asking for the accrual? Uh, uh actuarial yeah, sorry yes well don't we get an annual from calpers that's the whole point yeah would you and also we have a separate independent one so we try to maintain uh 75 percent for the pension and also right now actually our OPEP, the retiree bills is 102 percent so we already overfunded because john contributed that five million the 6.5 total into the into the uh, calpers so one is 75 another one is 102 right now it, it, it just oh, want a sentence that everybody knows yeah. there's an annual to do oh, sure. to, to look at this. And it's a super frustrating area because of the enormous latency in CalPERS' um, reporting and a little more complicated because you guys are in multiple pots depending upon pre and post the caps and which the police are in one and somebody's in another. And so it can get away. Uh, it's just one sentence that everybody understands. We're able to look at. Sure. Yes. Um. I will. I will add to that one. 
the sewer fund balance that one, and then I kind of uh, the reserve requirement is twenty five percent of of annual expenditures. Before was include the estimated capital improvement. I checked the capital improvement out because I think that this um, again I think it should be recurring revenue cover recurring expenses. A capital improvement is not like a recurring, uh, especially right now in Colorado. You can uh, this year they probably do like five million next year do six million or next 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 year do one million so those fluctuations is very huge and then I think um, we to for the reserve we should keep mainly keep keep the operation now for we have option to do the capital that's why I take the uh, including estimated capital improvement out. So if, if I'm confused out. about this one, I, I don't know that I care that much, but from that big debt that was presented to us. Yeah. The, the, the reason why the sewer rates going up so much isn't so much the operating expense. It's they're okay. building cash in anticipation of substantial capital spend. Yeah. So as capital. long as nobody reads this and then is completely confused by the this substantial rate, well, they're already confused. But the, and, the, and the reason they're confused is not necessarily that they're wrong, right? That model builds a bunch of cash in this bucket in anticipation of money to be spent forward. It does it on kind of a straight line basis because it's all coming, but that's why you have this double digit compound number that's catching people by surprise. And they'll be even more surprised when they see cash building up in that fund. So it's okay if it's not required, but we should make clear to people who live here that we're in fact building cash for that spend because they're going to pay sewer rates the next two, three, four years that are well above the cost of operations. We're just building cash. Yeah, this is just a side comment to the council. I mean, I don't know why it's not being pointed out that most of that growth is for for capital improvement. It's not for because services went down by the rates of people serving. The, 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 they, they asked from the community in terms of the sewer rate increase. Yeah. Which trigger the Prop 218 process yeah. is it is 100 based upon an engineer's report. Yeah, yeah. that engineer's report lays out where all why all the money is requested, yeah. where it's expected to be needed, and where it's going to go. I, I don't know what else we can do to educate the community other than continuing to point to that. I mean, it wouldn't be something you would put obviously in this document. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm okay it's with the this. council's in an awkward position too because we we cannot formally take a position for or against the prop 218 process yeah but but the the information is available to the people who want it it's, a, it's okay i'm okay with this change it's just not as long as we all understand it's not what's baked into the deck or the funding that's being asked for and we should just move on and i, I don't I'm not suggesting it's imprudent if the numbers are big but we're not slapping people with, you know, a 30 or 40 percent increase in year four to build that cash. We're building cash. But somebody is going to show up at some point when the CAFRA goes out two years from now and go, what's all this cash and sewer fund? And it is what it is. Yeah. You're already doing that because our, our quarterly reports show that there's an excess, I think, of $20 million yeah. in the sewer fund. And, and accounts never asked. Well, you want to raise $28 million out of, out of these rate hikes, but it says you've already got $27 million. Are you saying you're getting 28 on top of that? And the response from staff was one word, yes. It's, yeah, no, I, the report says what it says. Yeah. We have the added benefit of being bad analogy, but you know, little fish dealing with somebody else's big project and our share is our share. I mean, we don't have any control. All right, carry on, Mr. All right, so the last sentence, last section will be uh, the financial Sorry. reporting. So in the financial reporting one, uh -huh. we're going to add financial reporting and affiliated systems, right? Financial reporting and the uh, control of the related systems. And related systems. So we need a paragraph or something about the systems. And then the second thing was that this does not, I mean, uh, I think, I mean, we do the, whatever we call the CAFR now, we call it ACFR. Yeah, no, it's uh, I'm sorry. I know it's a bad word in some language, but it is it or something. So I didn't mean that. So act for and then, but we also for like two years were really good and produced a a, a 
times for it, we call it. Uh, it was like a it was like financial a statement. Full, uh, summary that went to every every uh, resident, etc. I thought that was a really good uh, practice. I don't know why it fell through the cracks. And uh, you know, as much as how transparent and boring our work is, that kind of made it a little bit nicer and consumable by people. I don't know why we we didn't. Uh, I guess it was a way of turnover. Yeah, yeah, that's what. Yeah, yeah we did. Did. I, I think, think we already wrapped juice buckles on it and said, yeah. well, you're fully staffed and have time. Yeah, yeah, yeah but can we, we make that as a good part thing. of this and say that that's that we should strive always always to have that have a full staff to be able to do? Yeah, yeah you put the full staff, I think, was encouraged to submit that and whatever the, the other document is called. So that second, third paragraph is the third paragraph. So you can add that. But then, what uh, about you if we not fully staff? We don't have staff, you made a policy. It's, um, it's, it's, you say if you're encouraged that. to submit it, you know, it doesn't say that oh, you must, right? to submit. Okay, say that already. I'm just saying you're encouraged to do two of those documents. But, uh, but uh, so that, and then the following paragraph about uh, that is sort of the integrity of the system so that the, the truth of the data, you know, can be verified and validated so that we can trust our numbers no, some nice. language like that right in that paragraph if you could also deal with cybersecurity and how you guys are protecting the systems these systems yeah or financial systems yeah or for how, how our financial systems are hard do you want to write that june or do you want uh john to write that i'm sure he's dying to write that <laughs> We do have. Uh, you don't. You really don't want me to write it because I'll write it a lot. But this has to be something that's achievable by a little town like ours, right? So you have to write something that says that we're trying to make the integrity of the data. I have the procedure I did for my company. Yeah, and I wrote yeah. that one. We will have a procedure too. Yeah, wrote by the our uh, the risk pool, the, uh, the uh, risk that company. Yeah, we do have a. a uh, cybersecurity yeah. uh, policy. I'm saying the language should be a should be a, a, a target, a goal, not process, not a procedure. We don't want to, you know, the, this language. I'm curious, where do you keep the data? Where is the data physically? Is it on the server here? So we have a server here. Is that server backed up to someplace in the cloud? No, yeah. I think it's all in the uh, so on our server. We have a backup on the server. We don't. We don't have on the cloud, especially financial data. We can access through. It was, it was a law that California data had to stay in California. Yeah. So we could world. not actually put it on the, on the cloud and send it because we didn't know where it ended up. I think that law has now been modified or whatever, so that uh, with, with all the campaigning by Microsoft and all these people, uh, but there's still a restriction that has stayed with the Yeah, but Microsoft States. Microsoft competes with military contracts and they would not allow but then they build data centers that right in the US. Exactly. So we we would have to find a special data center that guarantees that will not leave state of California. Well, you just have to pick one that's or just something. approved. There is, there is something more convoluted, and I think it's changed so it's possible for us to use web based software and not just stick to one server. Mm -hmm. But that was the restriction why we have a physical server under the finance director's desk. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. <laughs> 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 Well, well, I know my, I, know, I, know, I know Microsoft is is approved, approved. <laughs> so that, that that data has to be in the U.S. And so if that's the case, I, I don't know if I just say, say that uh, we need to have systems that uh, we can trust and uh, have the integrity of the data. Just, John can write that sentence, but one sentence page left. Yeah, one sentence. The state, the state, the goal, the goal is to be. I got a, I got a one sentence. You're not putting me any word limit up. Did I just add an action? Will be a fun. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting question. Is do California cities have to keep data in California? There's some there's something there that I'm not I don't I don't know. That I, I used to even if you have stored encrypted database someplace so like where you uh, can get it back yeah. with the like PGE has this requirement. Yeah. So, so PGE cannot send the data to the cloud. Yeah. So 
Because I know the DFD does it all the time, and that's perfectly acceptable under the NIST. So if you use a NIST server, um, and Microsoft is NIST server, uh, you can store your data there, and you're, you're golden. And then all you have to do is send encrypted files up to the yeah. server, and then you can have your local server and that Microsoft server, and they're just parallel. They're just talking to each other all the time. Until a 21 year old puts it on Discord. All right. So, last, last page. Oh, there are a lot of changes to this capital assets. So that's the definition of what yeah. you're asking. Is it? And, and so, this is where I had accounting thing going. I didn't understand. Did you mean to say capital assets are initially valued at historical cost? Because that, that's before they're depreciated, right? I didn't understand. They the, store the gross well, initially, yes. Initially. And then you depreciate against. Well, I didn't understand what the point but is. But the asset lives at its original value until it's taken off the books. Yeah, but it's accumulated depreciation. Subject to accumulated depreciation. Yeah. Yeah. So, presumably, really they're valued. That's what asset advantage for depreciation. Why well, do we do depreciation? To assure a fair presentation, what's the boundary crisis? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Spain? No, of course not. No, 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 no there's no, no income tax, no, so depreciation is meaningless. I mean, it's it's yeah, worthwhile it's to know. That's why it's just to have a useful life to know. Okay, this computer, you know, this roof is forty years old, so let's get a new one, but not for for any tax event. If we don't have a standby generator that is not ten years past its useful life. Yeah. <laughs> so all that <laughs> 30 year generator at least so it's a bug die. So I don't have to put that on the calendar buying a new generator. <laughs> donated capital so because donated capital. capital. I didn't know that. Oh well, so if somebody donates something to us, if, if like art, especially for art, those type of thing. We just buy you at the report at the market. Well, that's an interesting point. question. Do we have a procedure for somebody like to donate land for a park? Even if we don't have one, we'll create we'll one. If they want to. As soon as you decide to yeah. give us that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> well, uh, our, I don't know. Okay, problem. so this, these thresholds, are they from the 80s or are they okay? Um, I need to revise the threshold. Those are from the 80s. That's the standard actually by the auditor. Yeah, I'll go like I mean, five thousand dollar equipment. I mean, doesn't Gabe have a yes? These are actually, I, I bring that question when I went to conference with GFOA. I think that if you have like uh, uh, the federal projects, they will um, the feds require you give them the report on anything above five thousand dollars. How what you spend it on? That's what the five thousand came from. It's not a metric requirement for. Have to capitalize anything above you know five thousand. We can some city already changed to ten thousand, some is 20, 20, 25 thousand. But it is five thousand initially start is because the final project you have to report anything above. I understand, 5, but I mean, as a city, I mean, do we want to change this to be higher? Does it does this does this cause any you or gave any heartburn to have this limited? Uh, actually, no, because right now even the computer is under five thousand. We don't unless we pull a whole box like uh, you know even the chairs in here. If you count the individual one, it's all under five. But you can do a remodeling. As long as not causing you any problems, because I think it's I would have no qualms about raising the limit if if it's causing you operational issues. We don't have barely anything. Yeah, if anything, it will be generator. That will be way above five thousand. Yes. Um, I think the last last paragraph we just about talked about the true interest during the capital assets construction period. Um, that's just in case if you borrow money and then you do a construction, you're going to capitalize that interest. That that's all it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we have a few people who are going to bring some or uh, send you comments. You just write yes. Right. I will send it to Jim. John has right. You have one twenty. Uh, I, I have pensions. pensions. You've got the. Uh, He's got, they do going to have not really robust IT. for the whole city. I will not send my procedure to the city to follow to make it so they can make and, it. Uh, <laughs> and then we can mark it up and be done, right? It'll only be an attachment. And, <laughs> sorry. And you were going to do a definition of CIP. Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back to the agenda or are we done? Um, I think we are done. Oh, right, no, so I was going to last one for a second. Okay, let me see. Why are we having two meetings? Would you like to share with them? Well, uh, 22nd, I would like to um, 
discuss the financial uh, the, for the budget. Um, so what we're going to present into the city council. Uh, I have to tell you, it's not going to be 100% probably like a whole 200 pages or build a notification document. No, uh, it will be like mainly for financial information. What what like revenue sources will come in? What expenditure we're going to we're going to spend it on? Also, we introduce the first review of the CIP program. Uh, we need a definition of the CIP program now. Um, so see what project actually we are presenting to the city council. Um, those are those those type of nature. Mostly, it, most likely is for financial information, not for like write up and all that kind of stuff. No. When are we going to go through the audit report? The audit report. Um, I thought we already went through yeah, it. Right. Yeah. Which part do you want to go through? Because we sent our comments to her and she actually submitted to the council. Huh. I did change the yeah. I did change the. Uh, I we all did homework. Remember, we all did uh, sections. Well, we all did sections, sections of the uh, yeah. of the audit report. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that was so that uh, okay. we could uh, accelerate the process of, okay. of giving them to Jill so she could submit it. So all right, and she accepted all our yeah. We did. We, I did right. incorporate all the uh, the comments. Um, what I received. Good point. Yeah. So that was the version of it takes a village to. I do recall that now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we did took yeah. certain yeah. lines. You were correct. Great job. Yeah. 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 And I did the wrong ones. I didn't mark that. I must be suffering, Jeff. I think I was in the office this week. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, last one. Uh, so, we only have one agenda topic, but it's, uh, uh, I hope it's not two hours. I mean, we're not right there to every line item on the budget. We were interested in making sure that, uh, you know, at that level, we are only the budget that kind of makes sense, the ratios kind of look reasonable. You have your assumptions, you know, you are what kind of staffing rates you're consuming, your capital, et cetera, right? So those are terms of assumptions that are yeah. as opposed to, you know. And you're not going to go through no. those about trainings, and I don't think so. No. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. We, will, we will actually have a presenting, um, since we all know from the county, so presenting uh, by each, by the, just like the category here, general fund is a big one, reserve is another one. And then also for a rest the special revenue fund majorly is for a transfer the CFP to do the CFP project because that's what they're mainly for. And then also we're gonna present a, uh, the enterprise funds, which is the sewer and the solid waste, and then also the internal service fund. I do each by, by fund a presenting by fund to you guys to review. Um, this is how we we uh the, the, do the revenue assumptions for each funds and the, how we uh spending the funds, the money, and then this is the fund balance. Yeah. yeah, that's the high level. Property tax is going to be driven by the county's assumptions, or going to be make assumptions around. Actually, we did actually. Um, HDL does our assumptions. We just had a meeting with HDL consultant. Okay. Yeah, the same thing for sales tax. However, we we have a consultant for UUT as well, but we're not uh, adopting that their opinion because I think their information was old. We based on the uh, current economic. Uh, to do the assumption on UT tax. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Super. Yeah. One year, I think somebody sent us a spreadsheet with, with 20 tabs. You know, uh, that's not our job yeah, to review that. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was a painful way to on the program. Yeah. 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 We're uh, um, I'm not going to send you a spreadsheet now. Uh, maybe no, after we did. I mean, we, I don't know. I don't, do you remember? Were you here? For sure. I think, well, we could. Yeah, maybe kind of lot, and lots of things came in Excel, right? Um, and then you uh, want me special? No, that's oh, what I'm saying. Okay. No, 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 he's not is asking for that. Yeah, we're not going to review whether the police okay. department filled mm -hmm. out their spreadsheet correctly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's not our job. I, I, that's what I we got keep, one here. Yeah, I told you, I'll try to look at it. I may try to log in, but I'm in a dinner in Miami oh. next Monday. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you for your turn. All right, Mr. Turn. Thank you. <laughs>